Hey guys, Greg here. Topic, energy use in Japan. As many of you know, I'm a Canadian living in Japan. Canada is one of the top energy users in the world, even higher than our friends to the south, which is the United States, in case you have no clue where Canada is. Coming to Japan, I've noticed that us Canadians use energy a bit differently, so I wanted to share those differences with you. Also, I searched around the internet and found some stats to help explain things a little better. Now, because of methodological differences, and I hope I pronounced that right, in data collection amongst various countries, as well as the different types of energy use between electricity uh, to gas and, and whatnot, and as well the differences between household use, industrial use, commercial use, transportation, it's not always easy to get you know, apple to apple com comparisons of energy use in different countries around the world. But in general, what I can tell you is that Canada and, and the United States, we use about twice the amount of energy as Japan and even more so than uh, countries in the European Union like the United Kingdom, although maybe not so much longer anymore, and Germany. Now here's a stat. The United States uses 4,517 kilowatt hours of electricity per person per year, while Japan only uses 2,241. That's nearly half the amount. Us Canadians, we use a bit more than Americans. If we compare American households to British households, Americans use 2.7 times more electricity and 1.3 times more natural gas. You might be wondering, what do households use energy on? Well, in the United States, it's 32% space heating, 13% water heating, 12% on lighting, 11% on air conditioning, 8% for refrigeration, 5% for electronics, and 5% for wet clean, which means clothes dryers. Something I wanted to know is if Japanese are more environmentally conscious than us in the United States or Canada. My feeling is that it's not so much that the residents of Japan are actively trying to be environmentally conscious, but more so it's just that their lifestyle happens to be, conveniently so, environmentally friendly. Let me explain a few differences in energy usage. So previously I showed you what American households use energy on. Well, let's break that down point by point. Home sizes. Japanese homes are about half the size of American homes. And why is this? Well, Japan is an island nation, lots of mountains, very populous, and many tend to live in urban environments. Do Japanese want to live in small homes? Well, if you go from the urban environment to the rural environment, you'll see that homes get bigger and bigger. But on average, Japanese homes are smaller than American homes. For example, the average floor space per person in Japan is around 400 square feet, while in the United States or Canada, it's around 800 square feet. And when you have bigger homes, cooling is going to be more expensive. Now, something about Japan is that they have this gamma attitude around cooling your homes. You're supposed to tolerate the heat up to a certain extent, more so than in Canada or the United States. We really like using our air conditioners and central air. Now, with Japan, there is a cool biz campaign uh, that is put on by the government where they suggest air conditioning your offices in the summertime uh, down to 28 degrees Celsius. And that's about 82 Fahrenheit for those using that system. Now, this is not once it hits 28 degrees Celsius or 82 degrees Fahrenheit to cool it down or to start cooling it down. No, it means once it gets past that temperature, you cool it down to 28 degrees Celsius. So it's a bit warmer than what we have in American or Canadian homes. On the flip side of cooling is heating. And in the winter, I thought that Tokyo would be very warm. And outside the home, it was in comparison to the majority of Canada. Even though the last city I lived in was Vancouver, which is the mildest major Canadian city, Tokyo is still warmer outside in the wintertime. That's outside though, outside the home. Now, once you go inside the home, it's colder. Uh, and I was quite surprised by this. So on my first visit, I woke up in the middle of the night and I could see my breath because all the heaters were turned off and the heaters are not even central heaters. It's on a room by room basis using space heaters. Even my father, who is a hardened Winnipegger, found Tokyo cold. So that says a lot. Let's move on to water heating. With all the homes I've visited in Japan, they usually have a control panel where you turn on the gas when you need it. So instead of my water being heated all the time, like I'm used to in Canada, 
I had to actively turn on the heat in Japan when I want to use it for the water. Lighting. I know that uh, Canada and the United States were moving from, well, first from CFLs to LEDs. Um, what I've noticed in Japan when I go, go to the electronic stores and when I bought lights for my home, the major main choice is LED lighting. With refrigeration, I find that Japanese refrigerators tend to be smaller. And why is this? Well, maybe the families are smaller. Uh, I think so. But probably the, the bigger reason is because shopping happens on a more regular basis. Instead of grocery shopping once or twice a week, like I used to do in Canada, uh, my family ends up going three, four, five times a week. So when you go shopping more often, you end up needing smaller amounts of refrigeration. Also, freezers are non-existent, are almost non-existent. I haven't seen anybody who owns a deep freezer. All right, the next comparison point is electronics. And I have a bit more of a tough time comparing Japan versus Canada. Uh, but on the whole, I believe that Japan has less PCs. Um, they're more on the mobile devices. And not even laptops, but just your mobile phone. And then for TVs in the bedrooms, I don't see that as common. I have seen it, but they usually tend to be pretty small TVs and it's not in like every person's room and there's usually not some other entertainment room. So I think electronic devices uh, in terms of for computers and TVs, they're just about, there's less of it in Japan, I think. And the last on the category is wet clean, which is clothes drying. So in Japan, houses, apartments, any place you stay, the standard is to have a balcony and the balcony is used to dry your clothes. That's just the way it's been done, and that's the way it's still done. If you want a clothes dryer in Japan, it's a bit tough, unless you get an all-in-one unit. In my home, there's no separate space for a dryer, and there's no hookups meant for a dryer, so you have to really renovate your house to get a separate dryer unit. Most people hang dry their clothes. I think a very important reason that Japanese use less energy than Canadians or Americans is because the energy just costs more in Japan. Now I have my bills over here and maybe I'll put them up on the screen over here. And my kind of average energy usage in kilowatt hours is 180 kilowatt hours per month during the springtime. And then let's look at my gas bill. And what we have here, it's around 30 to 35 uh, meters cubed per month during the springtime as well. This is for a new four bedroom home, which is about a thousand square feet or so. That was inside the home. But outside the home, another major difference is personal transportation. When you're living in a big, dense, urban city environment like Tokyo, it's simply faster, easier, and cheaper to use the train for your public transportation. I know people do commute by car to work, but in the city, I think most people commute by train. When it comes to shopping in Tokyo, you can easily do it by foot or by bike. Uh, where I live, I have three grocery stores that are within a five minute walk. Now let me throw some stats at you. So Japan's CLT emission per capita for passenger transportation is only about 30% of that in the US. On that note, passenger travel per capita in the US is about 2.5 times greater than that of Japan. In 2008, cars accounted for 55% of passenger activity in Japan, which sounds a bit high to me, but hey, those are the stats. Whereas in America, that number was 88%. So those are the major differences in personal energy use between Japan and Canada and the United States that I could find. I think the reason that the residents of Japan use less energy than the residents of Canada or the United States is less so because they're environmentally conscious and more so because of factors like convenience, cost, tradition, and availability of resources. Before I go, I wanted to show you how energy efficient countries are when taking into consideration residential, commercial, industrial, and transportation uses. Now this is a chart for energy efficiency for countries with large economies. And you, as you can see, US is near the bottom, Canada is kind of near the middle, Japan is a few places better than Canada, and European countries dominate the top, and China's number four. I thought the chart was interesting, and as a Canadian, I can take solace and a little bit of pride in the fact that we're just a few ranks higher than the Americans on the International Energy Efficiency Scorecard. Efficiency. The International Energy Efficiency Scorecard. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the flip side. And oh yeah, I'd love to know, how much energy do you use? 
Um, how much do you pay for it? And what country are you from? Please let me know in the comments. Okay, for real this time, see ya.